Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, I'm showing you how to make perfect whipped cream. So let's get started. First off, grab an ice cold bowl. I like to put my bowl and my beaters in the freezer for at least five or 10 minutes. This way, your whipped cream will beat up so much faster, even if you're doing it by hand. So to make whipped cream, everything should be cold. My bowl came out of the freezer, the beaters were in the freezer, and my cream was in the fridge. <laughs> it doesn't have to be frozen. Whipped cream, or chantilly cream as it's also called, is something that goes with basically everything. You can have it on your angel food cake and berries. It could be for decorating cakes, or you could use it to make chocolate mousse or anything else. Today I'm using two cups of heavy cream, but you can scale this up or scale this down if you wanna make a bigger or smaller batch. Sugar is really added to taste. Some people don't add any sugar to their whipped cream. I like to add at least like two, maybe three spoonfuls. If you're sweetening your whipped cream, you could use powdered sugar or granulated sugar. They're both great. I prefer powdered sugar just because there's some cornstarch in that and it helps to stabilize the whipped cream, which is especially good if you're using it to decorate a cake like my Black Forest or Chantilly cake. I'm also adding in one to two teaspoons of a nice vanilla. This just gives us a beautiful flavor. You can also flavor your whipped cream with anything you like. Today's video is on the shorter side because whipped cream is just that easy to make, but I do wanna show you what can go wrong and also like what you can do to not make that happen. We're gonna start mixing this now before my bowl gets too warm. Start on low to mix the sugar in. If you're mixing this by hand, just get that whisk out, stretch and get going. If you watch this channel, you know whipped cream is one of my all time favorite things to make. I could eat this whole bowl and I might off camera. So <laughs> this is an important thing to make the right way. When you make whipped cream, there's a few different stages it could be at. It could be really soft and just like flowy, that's great for spooning onto berries, for example. If you're filling a cake, decorating with it, or using your whipped cream to make beautiful dollops, you want it to be a bit more stiff and stabilized. The danger comes in over whipping your cream. If you do that, instead of having a wonderful, smooth, cloud-like texture, it can become curdled. There are a few cues that you can look out for to know when to stop so it doesn't curdle and become like, unusable or just butter for your pantry. I'm increasing my speed now. If you're using whipped cream, it's best to serve it immediately. That's peak freshness and deliciousness. You can store whipped cream in the refrigerator though. It'll keep overnight. You might have to give it another whip just to like restore the consistency. Similar to how you would do for a meringue based frosting. If your whipped cream was on the edge of being over whipped though, you might over whip it by restoring the consistency. So just be aware of that. It's already changing consistency. It's becoming almost like a lava, like thick and flowy. And depending on where you live, whipping cream is called different things. In the US, they actually sell whipping cream but you often use heavy cream. They're almost the same thing. Some places it's called double cream and you can let me know in the comments if whipping cream is called something else in your country besides heavy or double cream. There will be splatters. I'm warning you ahead of time, that's what aprons are for. When your cream starts thickening up, you'll begin to see trails left by the beater. Keep an eagle eye on at this point. This is where things happen quickly. Making whipped cream is such an important skill. It goes into many different types of recipes. And even though it's so simple, it is something that almost everybody messes up at some point. You're like, oh, oh, it's ruined, <laughs> oh dear. So just knowing when to stop is the key point. Here, I wanna show you, we've been whipping it for just a few minutes, like a minute and a half, and the beater is leaving trails here. So it's becoming thicker. It's almost at the point where you could spoon it over some berries. By the way, if you give your whipped cream a taste and it's not sweet enough, a little bit more sugar. That's what it's there for. You don't have to add it in just at the beginning. Now, I wanna show you what the whipped cream is like. This beautiful cloud-like confection is perfect for spooning over berries onto cake if you're serving it with an angel food or chiffon cake or just spooning it right into your mouth. Let's take a look at the consistency on the berries. Now we're taking this to stiffer peaks. Just continue whipping it. Warning signs are you see any curdling, it gets too stiff or any yellowing in color. Once it becomes yellow, you know it's going to the butter place. So increase to high. There we go. Here you can see really holding its shape. You'll see lots of definition. It's not so like 
cloudy anymore. It's more like frosting. Now I've got to show you how this pipes. It can pipe just as nicely as any frosting. As you get closer to the edge of what whipped cream can be, it starts turning into butter. You're going to notice it gets curdled and starts taking on a yellow color. That's your signal to stop immediately. If you do ruin it and it becomes butter and basically water, just squeeze the water out and you have some delicious sweet butter to put on your toast. Sweet vanilla butter is actually really tasty, just not usable as with cream. So easy, so delicious and perfect. That's like the perfect snack. It's cloudy, dreamy, and delicious. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like my videos, check out my easy playlist.